Third day of three scary games. Woo! <laughs> um, so we're going to start off with this. Uh, do not take this cat home. That is not a possibility. I am taking this cat home. I don't believe in the slander of do not take. If you see cat and the cat distribution society chooses you, you take cat home. You're not having a great day as usual. Oh, great. It's the first time in a while that you felt like going out. But in the middle of your walk, it starts to rain. Typical, but maybe this is just a sign that you should have stayed home today. Yeah, you can always try again tomorrow, right? You turn to head home when... Huh, what was that? There are only a few people around on the street. Makes sense due to the increase of missing persons around the area recently. Well, that and the weather. But none of them react to the sound at all. Curiosity guiding your steps, you follow the sound to the entrance of a dark, dingy alleyway. You timidly enter the alley and walk forward. The ground dampened by the rain makes your steps sound louder and more confident than you actually feel. Meow, meow. Finally, the sound source comes into view in the cold, dim light of the alley. At the end of the alley is a big cardboard box. Is a cat. Huh. Guess that should have been obvious. It's an interesting looking cat. Its pretty yellow eyes shine like gold among the dark sea of its black fur. It puts its front paws up on the edge of the box and looks up at you. Oh. That's so cute. And it definitely knows it. You've never had much of an opinion one way or another about cats before. Well, that's false. Um, but if they're all like this one, it's a shock they haven't already found a way to rule the world. <laughs> oh, you don't think you'd mind bowing down to a feline overlord? You look around the alley with a small frown. Who leaves cats in cardboard boxes these days anyway? Wouldn't they just jump out and leave the box entire eventually? The cat doesn't answer you, obviously. It also doesn't do as you suggest and leave the box. It's just looking at you, as if waiting for you to make your, the next move. Take cat home. You know what? You reach into the box and pick the cat up, holding it out in front of you. Why not? You're all alone and, well, I'm kind of in the same boat myself, so you bring the cat close. You didn't realize it was shivering until just then, but it slowly breathes easier as it presses into your chest. Why not stick together, right? At least for a little while. Oh. You think a little while will probably be more than more like a day. You'll be responsible and take it to a shelter tomorrow, but for now, let's get you out of the rain, okay? <coughs> You stop by a small local pet store for some cat food, then head back home. You live in a modest apartment. One bedroom, one bathroom. Oh, one you living alone in it. So it feels weird having another living being inside it after so long, even if it is just a cat. After locking the front door and placing the cat on the floor, you watch for a moment as it curiously explores the new environment. Leaving the feline to its own devices, you set about making the both of you some dinner. You take out the can of cat food and open it with the tab on top. 
You put some cat food on a saucer and click your tongue to call a cat over to you. It perks up at your beckoning and rushes over. It looks at the plate of food and completely ignores it. Not hungry, I guess. You try not to let it annoy you. The cat doesn't understand the concept of money to appreciate that you spent your hard-earned cash on it. It's just a cat after all. I'll just leave it here. If you get hungry later, okay? The cat rubs its body against your leg with a purr. You smile. That's enough of a thanks for you. It follows you to the kitchen as you start on your own dinner. You decide that you have enough ingredients for a sandwich, bread, toasted, mayo, and mustard spread, turkey and cheese, and lettuce perfectly placed, tomato slice. Ow! You wince as you cut your finger on the knife while slicing a tomato. Stupid. You feel a little embarrassed for such a blunder and sigh, tossing the knife in onto the cutting board. You're about to head to the bathroom for a bandage when the cat hops up on the counter. It sniffs at the knife and meows almost pointedly at you. Don't worry, I'm alright. It was just a... Um, you watch as the cat starts to lick lightly but enthousi enthusiastically at the blood on the knife. At your blood. You're so shocked that by the time you come to your senses, the knife has been completely licked clean. The cat sits back, staring at you. You feel a little uneasy. Sure, cats are meat-eating predators, but that was a little weird, right? Sure, you're no cat expert, but that was definitely not something an ordinary cat would do, right? Well, regardless, you're not about to abandon a cat in need while it's still raining outside, not after all your efforts. You are going to take it to the shelter tomorrow anyways. What's one night of awkwardness? Weird or not, it's just a cat. The rest of the evening, unfortunately, goes downhill from there. Even after covering up your fingers cut with a bandage, the cat keeps trying to lick at the wound. While you're eating your sandwich. While you're cleaning up the kitchen, while you're trying to watch TV, you generally push it away every time, but you, you're starting to get worried at the strange behavior. What if it's got a taste for blood and thanks to your food now? You're not sure what you'll do if it starts to get more aggressive. You keep thinking about the cat food sitting in the corner on top. <coughs> oh, come on, enough already. You shove it away a little more forcefully this time out of annoyance. You feel bad immediately, but before you can do anything, the cat meows sharply at you and dashes off around the corner and into the hall. You sigh deeply. At this point, you're just worried that it's going to take a bite out of you in your sleep. Maybe a vet will have an idea of how to calm it down. You can only hope. You don't have many other options left other than tossing the cat out in the rain. After finding the number of a local vet, you pick up the landline and the lights just went out. Great, just great. Rain must have knocked out the power. You check your cell phone only to find that it's out of batteries. You must have forgotten to charge it before leaving out earlier. The outing had been so spur of the moment that it had no doubt messed with your usual routine. You grab a flashlight and turn it on. It's quiet. It's too quiet. Did the rain stop? But then why did the power go on? You look outside. The sky is pitch black. What time is it? You turn to check the clock. The cat sits on top of a di your digital clock staring at you. Thinking now, you realize the clock shouldn't be working at all with the power outage, but the numbers are lit up. And going completely haywire. That's mine. The cat stares at you. It's completely still. You think it was a statue if you didn't know any better. It's not giving off any indication that it's alive. 
It's not blinking, it's not even breathing, but it's eyes. This isn't normal. You're afraid. You want to run, but you're afraid of letting the cat out of your sight. You consider tossing the cat out after all. But as soon as the thought enters your head, you feel a sharp urge to vomit. Those eyes, its eyes hold you still. Even with your flashlight trained on it, its pupils are large, round, inky. The flashlight flickers. And the cat is gone. Fear immediately grips your mind. The silence punctuated with the rapid pumping of blood in your heart is overridden as your ears slowly start to pick up the sound of static all around you. How is the clock working with no power? You don't know why such a question matters at this at the moment, but you feel as if having the answer will make sense out of everything that's happening. That order will be restored. But no answer comes to mind. You back away from the clock and feel as if the air itself coils tightly and abruptly in response, like a predator prepared to pounce, but waiting, waiting for your next move. But you're afraid to move. You're afraid to even take a breath. But you can't stay still forever, right? Whatever is watching you, you can already feel its impatience. It's too eager. You don't know how to know this, but you can sense it as clearly as it had whispered. Let's play. Right into your ear. Right into your soul. It won't let you out. Not that you could, even if it did. You can't stay here. You have to run. With this thought, a sudden primal instinct awakens, awakens within you, making you tear yourself into a hasty burst of movement of action. But you're still weak from the fear's grip on your mind. Your legs tangle together under you in your haste, and you fall to the ground. A sharp pain explodes in the center of your foot. At first, you think you, you've broken your ankle. But something warm and wet trickles down the length of your foot, pooling underneath it. You hear the sound of metal scraping on tiles after skidding across the floor, as if it had been kicked. Winded from your fall, you look up in a daze and see the object glinting in a strange light coming in from outside. The light pouring in from your now open front door. Thoughts of how, when, who, what, in regards to your inexplicable, inexplicably open doors, screech to a halt as your brain finally identifies the metal object that you've been staring at. It's your kitchen knife, and it's tinted red from your earlier blunder, but that's not right. Wasn't it completely like cleaned by the you gulp dryly at the pain in your foot. You barely have time to wonder how the knife ended up on your living room floor to be stepped on instead of resting on your cutting board in the kitchen where you left it when you spy something in the darkness just beyond the knife. It spies right back at you. A pair of glowing golden eyes come forward as the cat emerges from the shadows and the light into the light from your hall or doorway. It pads lightly over to the knife as if skipping in delight and bends down to lap at the blood dripping from the blade. Ah, your senses slowly begin to overwhelm. The chill of the air as it starts to suffocate you under its weight. The sound of your shaking breaths discordant against the static now piercing your skull. The dryness on your tongue spreading to your throat. The incomprehensible incom sight of the stray you've taken in, licking away at your kitchen knife once again completely clean. 
the sense of blood from fresh wound on your foot. Blood. Golden eyes slide up to you as if in response to your sudden realization. Blood. You're hurt. Your foot is bleeding. You're bleeding. You're bleeding. The cat barely moves, shoulders twitching as if it, it as if just considering the act of pouncing forward. But you're already on your feet and out the door. You run or rather limp down the empty street. The sky is black and bleeding red, but there's a strange light emerging from nowhere that casts everything in white. The houses, the trees, the road, even you, everything, except for blood, except your blood. You can just barely glimpse the bloody imprints your injured foot leaves in your wake with every impact it makes with the ground. It hurts. It hurts, but you can't stop. You don't stop. Not when the shadows grow around you. Not when you feel the gaze of eyes all over you. Not when the road ahead of you is darkened by a long shadow of something behind you. Even then, you don't stop running because if that's the cat right behind, right? If that's the cat right there ahead of you, then what in the world is behind you? Keep forever. Huh. Interesting. How very, very interesting. Ending zero, it begins. So we're going to skip all this. I want to see what was behind me. After locking the door and placing the cat on the floor, you wait for it to walk away and explore the new environment. But it simply sits and looks up to you expectantly. Do something with cat. Like what? Um, let's play with cat. Poor thing was probably bored stiff sitting in that old box all day, just watching crowds of people walking by them, but ignoring them. You can't just leave them alone as soon as you're home. A little interspecies socializing won't kill you, right? Aw, you just want some attention, don't you? You want to play, huh? Yeah, okay, then. What to play, though? Look for some yarn. I think my laser pointer still works. Cats are curious creatures by nature. They're also a natural hunter, sort of. Why not pass the time by letting the cat hunt after something it'll never quite understand? That sounds a little mean when you think of it like that. But it's not like the cat will know anyway. Ignorance is bliss, or so they say. So you dig out your old laser pointer from your long gone dreaded days of group presentations in school. You flip it on and see that even after all this time, the battery still works. You get a little kick out of aiming it at a mirror hanging in the living room so it reflects off the glass, making a little red dot appear on your knee. The cat cautiously walks over, stopping every few steps to cast a, a look of suspicion at you. When it finally reaches you, it lightly presses a paw to your knee, like it's trying to catch the dot of red light as casually as possible. Hmm. You manage to hold back a chuckle. Not that it really matters. The cat isn't paying attention to you at all, entirely focused on the light now resting on top of its paw. You move the light a little higher above your knee. The cat re reacts immediately, trying to pin the light down. But in the next second, you've already moved it to the floor. The cat jerkily follows, attempting a more energetic pounce when you shift the red dot. Over here. Over there. And over there. By the couch. On the couch. <coughs> the cat might be ignoring you, but you're certainly enjoying yourself. It's been a while since you've laughed this much. You're laughing so much, in fact, that you accidentally shift the red dot onto a lamp beside <coughs> you. In its haste to get the light, 
The cat leaps on the lamp, sending them both to the ground. Oh my gosh. The cat's sitting in the middle of, a for of the former lamp's broken shards. Back hunched, its head whipping around back and forth as if in a panic. You quickly turn off the laser pointer and rush over. I'm so sorry. Are, are you okay? Are you hurt? You reach down to pick up the cat and check... If for any amusement. Slash. Ow, hey. The cat swipes at you, claws extended. It backs up and twitching, twitches away, making frantic half turns in various directions as if looking for something or waiting for something to appear. Oh, jeez, that really hurt, you know. You hold the hand with the scratch close to your chest. It's bleeding, but it's not... Too big. You're more annoyed than anything, but immediately your annoyance starts to bleed into concern. You watch in shock as the cat starts to run around, tearing at the carpet, the sofa, your armchair. You want to stop it, but you're afraid of getting in the middle of its rampage. You consider calling a vet for advice on how to calm it down, but for some reason, you feel like that wouldn't be a good idea. What happened to you? Is it an idea comes to you, or rather a realization? You grasp the laser pointer, aiming it safely away towards the floor in the middle of the living room, thinking, hoping that the cat will calm down if it found what it was looking for. You turn on the laser pointer. The cat's reaction is immediate. <laughs> You screwed up. In a span of mere seconds, you watch as the cat spies the red dot from its perch on the shredded armchair, leaps high into the air, changes the and slams down up on the dot on the floor with a weight and force that shakes the whole apartment, maybe even the whole building. You wondered dazedly how none of the other tenants had rushed over to complain about the noise. Yet, as you stare at the sight in front of you, the cat somehow grown in size. Eyes bulging and glowing, tail thrashing, teeth enlarged, bared, and covered alarmingly in a bubbling froth. Its giant claw rip and shred through the carpet, through the floor tiles and even below them. Ravenously trying to get at the red dot, your hands are shaking. You don't know how, what to do. You feel trapped. You have to get away. Get it away from you. You slowly back up towards the door. The light moves with you. Instinctively, you flick the light away. This way and that, the cat stampedly after you. Friends. So fast, smashing through the TV, breaking the couch in half. Too fast, bulldozing through the wall into the hallway. A chance, you turn, intending to bowl out the door and never come back. But in your haste, you forget something. You forget several somethings. You forget the laser pointer gripped like a lifeline in your hand. You forget the mirror, still miraculously hanging on the wall next to the hallway. The laser reflecting off of it, putting a small glowing red dot on the back of your head. As if you re at, and as you reach the door, you forget that it's locked. You don't even have a chance to turn around before the cat lunges all the way across the room at you. You're torn to shreds before you can, can even blink. There are a lot of endings to this. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do for now. Um, I might do a little more in another video for this to like see all the endings and stuff, but that's two of the endings. That was ending 12. Um, if you want to see 
more of these endings, definitely go check out this game because there's a lot of different endings for this. Um, oh, there's 40 endings to this game. Wow. Okay, yeah. Um, still would take the cat home. That's a given. But yeah, that was um, Do Not Take This Cat Home. Um, really cool uh, point and click game with a lot of different endings and choices and everything. So yeah, highly recommend this. Okay, second game we're going to play is Death Trips. Um, Inspector M. James is in a haunt for a serial killer called Lady Death. The last victim of this dreadful criminal was found in this cheap hotel, where Lady James is currently investigating. Unfortunately for the inspector, the murderer is still there. Okay. Interesting art. Hmm. What's with that face? Hello. All right, what do we got soda wise? Can't see. My vision is bad. Key? Just kind of took me in. God, that's great. That is so great. Uh, okay, so that was uh, Death Trips. <laughs> very short, very short horror game. Um, but yeah, the, um, <laughs> we'll go on to the third game now. Okay, and the final game is going to be Cursed Baby, which is Probably this thing. So we'll see how this goes. Okay. Read. What do I read? Okay. Welcome to the team. Your first task is to repair several things around the building. Head to the basement to collect your tools. Then start on the first floor. Good luck. Maintenance manager. Okay. Go to the basement. Got a lot of tools and I can cycle through them. Okay, so repair generator in room four. Hello, maintenance. Coming in to repair your generator. We finally moved into our new home today. Lucas loves his new room, and I feel hopeful for the first time in a long while. It's been tough, but I believe things will get better here. Evelyn. Okay. 
Where's your generator at? Oh, here it is. Uh, repair. Wrong tool. Needs a hammer. Okay. Cool. Alright, thank you. Uh, room one. I got a couple things in room one. And it is here. Hello, maintenance. Um, clean up this dust. I feel like they could probably do this themselves, but I guess they need a professional like myself. Um, so John has been acting strangely since we moved in. He keeps talking about bad energy in the apartment and wants to cleanse it. Lucas has been unusually fussy since we arrived. Evelyn. It's the same name in the other one. This they in multiple rooms? They own this whole apartment. Jugs of water. Garbage. What do we have here? John brought home some strange books today. He said they're for protecting us from the rituals and symbols, but the, the rituals and symbols are unsettling. Lucas cries more than usual now. Okay. How tall is this counter? Or am I short? Maybe I'm short. Okay. Repair pipe. Um, this. Perfect. Toilette. Okay. So now we have to go to room seven and room eight. Oh, I will. You see? I'm vacuuming you up, baby. Okay, I don't know if this job is paying me enough to deal with this. Um, because this place is definitely haunted. Um, I'm not being paid enough to do this. They got spooking chairs. Let's go in room seven. They got ritual stuff going on. Clean up all the random stuff. Um, I can't take it anymore. John is obsessed with rituals, believing Lucas is cursed. I feel completely powerless to protect my baby. I'm just here to clean up dirt. I don't want to be involved with rituals. I'm just... maintenance oh. I'm just gonna I'm just here to repair the wall okay I found John in Lucas's room last night chanting something over his crib Lucas was terrified and screaming like never before I'm so scared for us hello okay just gonna be repairing the wall. Let me close this. Okay. Nice and fixed. You got your. Uh oh. You don't have a toilet. We couldn't install a toilet in every room. I'm sorry. You get a sink in this one. You get a cabinet and a garbage can. I guess you can shit in the garbage can. 
Okay, um... Bye. Okay, repair TV in room 9, repair generator in room 11, and repair pipe in 12. Let's go on 9. Uh, ma maintenance. Oh, they didn't pay their electric bill. I don't know where the TV is. I'm doing all this stuff. Okay. Um, repair generator in room 11. Hi, maintenance here. Repair your uh, generator. It happened. John's rituals went too far. Now Lucas is gone. I can still hear my baby's cries echoing in the apartment. So apparently they just own this whole apartment. Like the whole apartment complex. Um, bang, bang. Bam, bam. Bam, bam. Bam, bam. Wow, I did it. I'm a professional. I'm what they call a professional. Alright. That one's finished. Maybe they're the owners. Maybe they don't live here. They're just the owners, so they own the whole building, and I guess they're re remodeling the whole place. That's why they have me fixing all this. Um, repair pipe. Um, Lucas barely plays with his toys anymore. The wooden train just sits there. It breaks my heart to see him like this. Okay. Okay, fix that pipe. Close this door. No baby on the stairs. Good thing, good thing. We'd love to see it. We'd love to see it or not see it. And, um, Lucas used to fly his wooden plane all over the apartment. Now it just sits there untouched as if waiting for him to come back. I pray this ritual works so he can find peace. Air machine. Another dark part. Um. Come any closer. Baby should be climbing on the ceiling, but you know, I'm just the main person. I don't. Uh... Okay. This is one of those weird rooms. I'm just gonna run. We don't really rent out this room very often. It's a very dark room. Find the flashlight. Oh, all my stuff is gone. I got 
Fashion Malay. I tried to gather Lucas's toys, the train, the plane, the horse, but I couldn't collect them all in time. Maybe that's why he's still here, waiting to be set free. So I gotta find all the toys. This flashlight does work very well. Oh. Okay, so I think I have to try and avoid the baby and find items. Let's go this way. Spooky baby is over there. It's cool. I got your plane. Like, I don't want it. I, I, you can have it. Like, if you want it, it's, it's all yours. I really don't want the, the plane. Like, on a scale of me wanting this plane, and it, it, it's about negative three. I really don't want it. Okay, I got the horse, I got the plane, and I gotta find the train. Can you see where the train is? I don't want to like run into you. I'm worried about this. Um, I'm guessing it's in the middle where the baby is. Is the baby still chasing me? Okay. Um. Hi. Okay, I got two things. Oh god, that scared me. Um, gotta find one more thing. Baby, baby can't open doors. You know that is. What's that? Leave the building. I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this. This is a good idea. Oh. Locked. Okay, I gotta go through. The apartment's coming through really quick. I got just gotta, you know, through here. Oh, it's just. Thank you for what you're, you've done. I couldn't collect all of Lucas's toys in time, but you set things right. My baby can finally rest now, and so can I. Goodbye, and thank you. Okay, I'm glad I helped. I'm glad I helped. Uh, that's what I'm here for. That's all I'm here for. I'm glad. Oh, this is the basement. I don't want to be in the basement. I want to leave. Leave, 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 leave. Okay, let me... The hallway leading to the apartment is... Oh. Did I really help? Because the baby stopped helping. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and that was uh, Cursed Baby. <laughs> um, that was definitely the scariest one I've played of all the games so far. Um, 
it got me both times. Like, I actually jumped. Um, very, very good horror game. Like, there's a lot of things to do. Um, a lot of different, like, um, tasks and things, which is fun. You know, like, I got to repair things. I got to um, clean things. That, that, that was great. And then the jump scares were great. Um, the baby chasing you was freaky as hell and then appearing in places. But yeah, that was uh, three scary games. One was very short. Um, <laughs> death trips. Um, but yeah, uh, I will, like always, put all the links to these games below if you want to check them out. Support the developers and everything. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was uh, three scary games. Um, make sure to... You know, subscribe if you want to see more scary stuff. I have a bunch of, you know, videos on here of other scary games and random games and, you know, like Lethal Company if you're into that or whatever. But yeah, I am enjoying these uh, three scary games. I have a bunch of games planned for the rest of Spooktober. So yeah, stay tuned if you're interested in that kind of thing. And, you know, do the things if you want you can like the follow button follow the like button um subscribe to the subscribe button and um yeah just hope you enjoyed thanks